In this video we're going to take a look at cursor shapes and selecting regions on the screen in Excel 2013. Uh, first of all, the cursor shape that you see most of the time when you're out here over the work area is going to be a big fat white plus sign and that's the cursor that you use to select data on the screen. And all you have to do to select data is just click and drag and you can select any region you want to. Uh, usually you do this if you're going to be formatting some data. Uh, just select whatever data you want to format. And as usual in Excel or in Windows, if you want to do a non-adjacent selection, uh, all you have to do is select the first region. Then when you start on the second region, hold the control key. I missed it. Let's try that again. Hold the control key down and select another region. And you can select uh, anything that you want to. So you can select multiple regions as long as you hold the control key down. Okay, so uh, the plus sign is what you see down here. That's used to select. And um, some other shapes that the cursor takes on. If you move it to the top of a column here, it turns into a fat black arrow pointing down. And if you click on it, it selects everything that's in that row or in that column all the way down to the bottom row, which is one million and something. And the same thing applies here. If you want to do a non-adjacent selection, I'm just holding the control key down and clicking on some more columns. And if you want to select a bunch of adjacent cells, just click and drag through the column headings like this. You can also uh, click on the first one and shift click on the last one and that'll select everything in between. Same thing applies to rows over here. You can just click on the fat black arrow and you get everything in that row. And if you want to do non-adjacent, hold the control key down like I'm doing now. If you want to do adjacent, you can just click and drag. Or you can click on the first one and then shift click on the last one. Some other cursor shapes. Um, most of the time you get a fat black arrow here, but when you move in between two columns here, it turns into a two-headed arrow. And when you've got a two-headed arrow, you can say, change the width of the column. And I'm going to get that back the way it was. I'm going to do a control Z to undo it. And now we're back to where we were before. Uh, you go to the right side of the column to make it wider. And when you're doing rows, if you want to make a row taller, uh, you go to the bottom of the row and get the two-headed arrow and click and drag. And you can make it as tall as you want to. And I'm going to do a control Z to undo that. OK. Um, some other things that you may want to do. We need a little bit of data to try this out. Uh, let's do a one and a two and a three here. And um, most of the time, uh, like I said, you get the white plus sign down here, but if you move around the selection, uh, all the way around the selection, you get this four-headed arrow, except in the lower right-hand corner here. But everywhere else you get the four-headed arrow, and that means what it means most places in Windows, which is uh, if you click and drag now, you will move whatever is selected. So I can click and move that over there, and I'm going to do a Control z to bring it back where it was before. Um, now, if you go to, and you can do multiple cells too. So I can select multiple cells here, move to the edge, get the four headed arrow, click and drag, and I can move them anywhere I want to move them. And I'm going to do a control Z again to put them back where I started. Now, the other thing you can do is, uh, if you go to the lower right hand corner here, you get this little plus sign, black skinny plus sign called the fill handle. And if you click and drag when you get the fill handle, it will fill in the cells with whatever you have selected. I'm going to do a control Z. So I get ones all the way across here, and a control Z brings it back. And I can do the same thing going down here. If I get my fill handle and drag down, I get ones all the way down, but it wipes out the data that was here. I'm going to do control Z to bring that data back. And the other neat thing you can do is if you have two cells selected and you click and drag, guess what happens? Excel assumes that whatever the increment was between this cell and this cell is something that you want continued. So if I have uh, Let's say I have 1.5 here and 1.75 here. So that's an increment of 0.25. If I select both of them and get my fill handle and drag it down the page, I will get increments of 0.25 all the way down. And that's the fill handle. The fill handle can also be used with formulas, but we'll take a look at formulas uh, a little bit later in another video.